Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. This week, I have five new reviews for you folks, a little more than I've usually done. Um, finished editing that last book, put it up for pre reader We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I t- took the weekend off from writing just to, to and I get just to read and relax. And I got a couple. <laughs> extra reviews done for you folks as a consequence um the reviews that we're doing this week are going to include uh tears of alron the alchemist book number three legendary dungeon seed book number one uh also redemption a space slit rpg adventure the last enclave book number two and also apocalypse hero a dark fantasy game lit adventures of dan book number one and uh, another apocalypse RPG story called Mind Games, a lit RPG apocalypse real RPG book number one. Uh, so we have five new reviews to you. Um, not much of the new section at this point, actually. Uh, but of course, we have a section, so we'll, we'll play music for you and we'll talk about some lit RPG news. <laughs> And in Little RPG News, we just quick reminder, Mechanical Crafter book number two is out as a pre-order for July 24, 2020. Uh, not much else in Little RPG News. There's a little bit about um, a particular um, narration company and an author's parting ways, um, but uh, that seems more businessy. So I'm like, oh, it doesn't really affect the, the audience too much. Um, but that's it for a little bit of news on the stuff we have that's coming out in the near future. Um, out uh, now, rather. Now that your future out now, have had a chance to read it. Uh, that includes Watcher's Question, a lit RPG saga, Life in Exile, book number two. Also out right now is Tears of Elrond, which we were talking about. I should have cut this out, but it's uh, there. That's out for you to enjoy. For Hex, for X, for Hex, a lit RPG strategy series by Ember Lane. Also out is a mixed martial cultivator, round one. Uh, and Inthium. Path of Graves, a lit RPG epic series. And the second book in the Mephisto's Magic series online should be out by the time most of you, you uh, watch and listen to this on the uh, 17th of July. Um, also out there is the sixth book in the Dungeon Core Academy series called The Mage with the Stupid Tattoo uh, by Alex O'Crest. So it's a fun series. Uh, and also a new book that just came out in the last couple of days, uh, Monster Hunting 101. Uh, the Fantasy Adventure Titan Termination Book Number One. So, all kinds of new stuff for you to enjoy. And new Little RPG audiobooks. We have some really good stuff here. Um, you definitely need to clear your schedule. Um, these are some monster books here sometimes, uh, including Counter Worms Apocalypse Gates, Author's Cut Book Number Six, An Enjoyable Story, uh, Master of None All Trades um, Book Number One. This is what picked up by Podium Books, audiobooks. The ebook cover used to just be like this green cover with like um, some coins on there. I reviewed it. It was really entertaining story. Um, and the audiobook version of that is out for you now. Uh, also, The Wandering In Volume Two is out for you to enjoy. Um, I believe it's something on the lines of 60 hours, 60, I think 68 hours of, of, of audio book goodness performed by the wonderful Andrew Parsnow. Um, so definitely go check that out. If you haven't go, go listen to volume one first, um, then come back for this and that'll, that'll, that'll probably take you for a couple weeks, just, just a couple of stories, you know? In upcoming Litter BG, this is a section where I just read off stuff. It's coming out in the near future, so you can plan your reading or your publishing schedule uh, if that appeals to you. So that's on July the 20th. This is The Source, a Litter Fantasy Adventure, a newer Fireborn book, book number one. Uh, a new list also on July 20th is called Gamified, book number one, Beastmaster. Uh, July 21st, Blade Walker Chronicles, Storm Shadows. Uh, July 24th, the Mechanical Crafter, book number two, will be out uh, for you to enjoy. Yeah. Book number two will be out. Also on July 28th, it'll be the second book in the Eternal Online series. July 31st, it'll be book one in the Vindication series called Era of Justice. Uh, July 31st, it'll be the fourth book in the Space Season series called Autumn's Infernos. August the 4th, it'll be the book The Hidden Paladin, The World of the Undead Force, book number one. New to the list is uh, August the 4th, Modern Paladin, a Liberty Adventure. August the 5th, it'll be Lord of the Dead, The Eternal 
Journey, book number two, August the 8th, War of the Posers, The Bad Guys, series, book number four. August 11th, The Heavenly Throne, book number two. August 19th, Intellectium. August 23rd, The System Multiverse, book number two. August 25th, The Dream Steam Reality. On August 27th, it'll be Small Unit Tactics, book number one, A Russian Annihilation Story. Um, September the 4th, it'll be Discardium, book number five. September the 9th, Dungeon World, A Reborn Online, Little BG Adventure. September 15th, Stolen Lives, The Underhill Chronicles. September 30th is going to be Sovereigns, the uh, fourth book in the God Game series. October the 2nd, Dungeon Crawler Carl by Amazing Matt Deniman. On October the 6th, it'll be Watcher's Fate, book number three, book number two, just coming out now. On October the 7th, it'll be The City of Goblins. The In System, book number one, October 26th, Underdog, book number four. There you go, folks. All stuff I know is coming out in the near future. On to new releases and reviews. And first up this week is going to be Tears of Alron, The Alchemist, book number three, written by Vasily Mahenko. It is 320 pages, $6.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. The Magic Academy, an institution shrouded in mystery and secrets. People from all over the different empires want nothing more than to enroll, yet their hands on the knowledge stored there become the most respected in the world, mages. Teolin Vashlia was one of the lucky few admitted without going through the entrance exams, and once inside, he had training, the arena, lessons, and an interesting take on what hap- had happened 3,000 years ago to look forward to all capped off by a dynamic labyrinth that came with a chance to sit down with the provost. After all, that's who holds the keys to the secret of the dragon's blood. But how are you supposed to find time to study when your mentor has a problem he can't handle on his own? Once again, Talon faces a road very unlike the noisy halls of the academy, life itself reprising its role as his trusty teacher. Uh, so there you go. Uh, full disclosure, I received Ben's copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, this, this is just another good novel from the author. I've enjoyed every book in the series. I enjoyed everything that I think the author's written, uh, in, in, in the genre. Um, and this is no different. I've, um, this is always, this has been an interesting series. This is a very slice of life story. Um, it's set, it's connected to another series the author has written. Um, but it's its own thing with magic and its own game system and, and cards as a magic system like having different card sets and um and and the main character in the first couple books kind of having this ability um as a level zero level one character um getting these interesting bonuses because he couldn't actually level because it wasn't old enough in this third book that definitely shifts because now he's 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 of age he's 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 old enough to join the academy and also start leveling up like everyone else which means um uh, like that particular game mechanic is is shifting a little bit um and while from the novel description, I thought that this was going to become like this, some magical Academy story arc, which would have been not disappointing, but it would have felt a little more familiar having a super fan of Harry Potter. Um, and I'm glad that it didn't just do that. Yes. Part of the story, the little story takes place in a magical Academy. Um, but it, it, it's not a peaceful existence. It's nothing like Harry Potter in that respect of like him having a year to like study and learn and expand his knowledge base while while facing these challenges. And instead there are new adversaries, there are new threats, but there's a ton of action and the magical Academy story kind of takes a backseat to some of these weirder um, experiences and adventures. And I, I, I was just constantly surprised in the story, like all the different weird twists that the story run through that, uh, I was again. I was expecting one kind of story, and I definitely got something that was very different. Um, and, and and each one of these twists was like, oh, I I never would have seen that coming. Um, even though like looking like, oh, that, I guess that was sort of foreshadowed a little bit in like previous books or other elements. But um, it it was a very entertaining story right up to the very end. But again, this is a very slice life story, which means that. Um, the story plot lines aren't necessarily completely fulfilled by the end of the story. So um, it's something that's continued on the, in the next book in the series. And so for me, I'm cool with it. I'm an, it, 
I've been entertained every single one of these stories. This one is no different. It gets a score of 7.8 out of 10 for me um, because it is entertaining for me and I had a good time with it. So if you've read the previous two books and you were maybe worried about the direction this was going, don't be. This is still very fun and interesting. Um, but if you didn't like the previous books, um, this probably is, this really isn't that different enough that it's going to suddenly jump on your radar. But um, I had a great time with it. Again, score 7.8 out of 10 for The Tears of Alron, The Alchemist, book number three. Um, go, go read it if you enjoy the author or the series. And next we have Legendary Dungeon Seed, a dungeon core monster girl fantasy uh, written by Mark Robert. It is 150 pages, $2.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here is the author's description. Craft dungeons, cultivate monster girls, become a king. Osmond Smar just made a very dangerous bargain. To try and cheat death, he agrees to play a new VR-based fantasy role-playing game. However, Osmond won't be playing as a warrior or a wizard, but as a dungeon core. Now he must build an underground labyrinth of tunnels and chambers formidable enough to withstand any and all attacks. But in order to do that, Osmond needs to learn dark magic, summon powerful minions, and cultivate gorgeous monster girls to be his loyal level bosses. Um, and there's like a little warning saying contains dungeon building elements, harem building, lewd content, foul language, and explicit scenes, uh, plus some other stuff. So, um, there you go. Uh, full disclosure, I received advanced copy for review. I purchased the copy when it became available. Um, this story, um, did not work for me. Uh, and it is the author's, I think the first story he's published. Um, and I'm trying to be kind about the things that I say, uh, just because, I know how, um, how easy it is to get frustrated with your writing. And while this story did not work for me, uh, for several reasons which we go into, I don't think that it's terrible. Um, I just didn't work for me. Um, the opening pages of the story are probably the hardest part of the story to get through. Like the opening, um, and it's not, not really a long story in the first place, but the opening was just tough. Uh, the, it starts out with this main character who's suddenly a dungeon core and he's, really super whiny about it and that just kind of put me up on a bad footing really and then immediately after that um the main character is recalling events in a flashback um like two two events in a row two different flashbacks were back to back basically um that had to occur like hours or minutes before the beginning of the story so the the, the setup um of, of the story on, on a story structure level was a little bit confusing because while those little flashback questions weren't poorly written, they didn't make sense in the context of what was happening in, in, in that beginning section of, of, of the main character suddenly becoming a dungeon core. It's not until the end of the story where these characters that were in the flashbacks come back and they're introduced that it makes a little bit more sense, but it, because they were just, were out of place flashbacks at the beginning of the story, it, it kind of made me confused and just, it's just another element that made that structure um, un, not, not unpleasant, but less than enjoyable. Um, in that beginning section, that was just so hard to kind of push past because after that point, once it actually gets into the more of the like straightforward dungeon core stuff or dungeon master stuff, um, it got a little bit better. Like you could see, oh, this is actually <laughs> what it says in, in the description and the title. The main character is dungeon. Um, I wouldn't really call him a dungeon core because he already has a he already has a body, even though he does have a have a, um, a life force core that he's keeping in his pocket or something. He is a full person. He gets a couple minions and he, a couple battles. And then that's kind of the end of the story. There's not a lot to it. There's definitely no dungeon building. Um, there is some maybe dungeon minion summoning or, 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 or taming, whatever. Um, but like I really, really call it a dungeon core story just because that, that has a different feel to me of like being an element of core in a, in a particular situation and slowly growing your, your, your dungeon and your labyrinth and as they're being monsters or whatever the case. And that just has a slight issue. So there's probably more of a dungeon Lord or dungeon master kind of story. Um, and, and, and that, that's what it is. Um, there are other elements of stories you should be aware of. Obviously the, the, the author has put a warning in the, in the beginning of the novel description. Um, there is some, um, sexual content, uh, that amounts to essentially a couple short sex scenes. I didn't care for them personally, not just because they're, they're sex, not really my thing, uh, in, in my story, little bit of stories, but rather they didn't really, they didn't really make sense to the story itself. Like they didn't, 
It wasn't like some weird relate or some relation that has this natural progression. And this, this is just kind of consequence of like them dating and becoming more intimate. It was really just like, oh, here's a person I met. I think they're hot. Bang. And even though the person comes back later in the story, it's just like it didn't really kind of make sense of the context of the story, especially because like a, one of the big motivating factors for the main character to stay in the dungeon was his love for this, this unrecorded love for some other character in the outside world. Uh, and that's really like the main factor for like the villain as well, um, without spoiling things. But And so for him to do this with some other kind of randomish um, girl, which and, and I'm assuming that there's a connection maybe in the, in the next story or whatever, but, um, it just felt out of place, um, storytelling wise. So I, I just didn't, the, 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 the sex scene just kind of detracted for the story from me, for me at least. Um, like I said, the, the story itself is not about necessarily badly written. There are storytelling structure issues, I think. Um, that are kind of a detriment um, to my enjoyment of the story in particular. There are other elements that I did enjoy. One of the monster characters that are the the Sun Bowl Minions is a, a super interesting, funny corgi <laughs> with a uh, dragon complex, I think is the exact phrasing. Um, it, it, it was probably the best part of the story just because it's a fun element. It added an opportunity to to kind of tell the story from an actual like NPC character point of view. Um, and and it, Finally, had some good dialogue. Once that character appeared, there was dialogue in the story that was entertainable and gave an opportunity to explain the dungeon core mechanics that are in the story. Um, but aside from that one character, and aside from that, it, it nothing else was really outstanding as being like, oh, this is this is an amazing mechanic, or this was an amazing storytelling thing. It's just like, oh, that's okay. There's nothing really amazing, unfortunately. Um, so for me, like the rough star was probably the thing that kind of turned me out the most. Um, if it wasn't for the core geek character, I'll be honest, probably would have got a, a, a worse score. But for me, get score six out of ten, which is just not necessarily bad or even boring. Just wasn't entertaining for me. Um, somebody else might like it, I guess, but it didn't work for me. Uh, that's Legendary Dungeon Seed Book Number One, a Dungeon Core Monster Story, uh, with a score of six out of ten. Next up is going to be Redemption, um, a Little Liberty Space Adventure, the last Enclave, book number two, written by Morgan Cole. It is 341 pages, $4.99. It's available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. Hordes of alien monsters are reading on Pluto. The shield protecting soul is failing. Can Jake save Earth from infestation and annihilation? After his triumph on Pax, Jake returns home to Earth. In far northern Canada, his grandfather hit an outpost that may have the solution. The town sheriff thinks he's an imposter. Unnamed government agencies would love to vivisect him, and powerful forces lurk in the shadows. Even with his grandfather's powerful legacy, will Jake have what it takes to stop the threat to Earth? So there we go. Um, this is the second book in this particular series, and it's for all this is a light little bit of story. Even book one was a little light on the game mechanics. Um, but this second book in the series is even lighter than that. There's a, uh, I'm going to say there's a lot of direct progression. The book one had like book one had a lot of upgrading, um, a lot of kind of crafting from like a, a, a future scientific perspective, like grabbing resources and rebuilding a space station or a space uh, outpost and a green technology and suits and, and getting levels to fight monsters like uh, nanotech monsters um, in book one. And so there were, there were, there definitely was kind of this gamified progression system there. And while those same mechanics exist in book number two, they're not really a focus that there really isn't a lot of book. And there's a tiny bit, there's a tiny bit of like crafting towards the end um, but that, that, that entire section of like the progression mechanics really takes a back seat to like the sci-fi buddy adventure story here. Um, and for me, that definitely dragged, that definitely lessened my enjoyment. Not to the point where I didn't like the story, it still gets a good score for me. Um, but it wasn't because necessarily of the RPG mechanics or the, even the RPG progression system that was the, that was a bigger part of book number one in the series. Um, so if you want if you like Book Number because of those reasons specifically, Book Two might not satisfy you in that respect. Um, it might satisfy you in other respects, though. Um, the story in this novel um, starts off with a good sci-fi space battle um, and and a good fight. Um, but from the about the fifty percent on for the majority of the story, it actually shifts 
um, from like the space sci-fi stuff to more of a, a buddy adventure on earth. And for me, I actually think that was a good story choice from the author. Um, it was a kind of a great turn because the, I didn't mind the, the big space battles, but for me, it felt so removed, um, mostly because I've, I've read <laughs> so many stories since, since I've read this, um, that I kind of forgot like, Oh, what was like the point of it all? I just remember it. Oh, I, I enjoy the story. Um, and once the main character returned to earth and kind of reconnected with like the reasons for him wanting to save earth, um, it, it, it became grounded. It became much more relatable to me. It's one thing to kind of have this vague desire to save earth. Um, but the author really gave the main character a reason um, to save the people on earth, the people in his lives, whether it's what, whether they were jerks to him or not on earth. Um, and, and, and it made the sci-fi space opera stuff a little more relatable for me, at least because it's, it's grounded in like, these are actual people with backstories and, and, and connections. Um, and I, I like the fact that it's reconnecting back to the earth story instead of just like going further and further out into space necessarily. Um, the sci-fi space software stuff again, in the story is a little more prominent the beginning and end of the novel. Um, with alien battles, space battles, and sh alien ships and, and shooting and stuff. Um, and again, a smaller amount of crafting and RPG progression. Um, so overall, good, entertaining story. But again, it does lose for me um, some of the RPG progression, which I thought was unfortunate, but it, it is just a story choice. Um, so for me, it could score 7.4 out of 10. Book one, I believe, we got like a 7.8, 7.9 or something along those lines. Um, and this one just loses a little bit just because, again, lack of the thing that I enjoy the most about Little Beauty, which is the RPG progression stuff. Um, so that's 7.4 out of 10 from Redemption, a Little Bitty Space Adventure, The Last Enclave, book number two. Still a good story. Um, so go go check it out if you enjoyed book number one. There you go. <laughs> Apocalypse Hero, a game-lit fantasy, uh, The Adventures of Dan, book number one. Um, it is 172 pages. It is $2.99. It's available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. One man, one bat, one adventure. A suburb full of the undead, a city full of monsters, and Dan. Dan was just an average guy, overworked, underappreciated, and down on his luck. And so the end of the world came and he gave him a system with it, and with it a chance to be what he had always wanted to be, a hero, but first he needs to learn how to st how to help him s how to help himself stop dying until we can get good, get good. It's actually loaded how it's spelled. Okay, um, this is an RPG apocalypse story. Um, what that means is that it, it, like a zombie apocalypse or a viral apocalypse story, it's kind of the end of the world. And in this case, it's because an RPG system has been imposed upon Earth by aliens or some other force. Um, and so everybody kind of has, has system powers. They have RPG notifications. They have maybe a, a character sheet. That's that's the kind of story, kind of subgenre that, that, that I qualify this as. Um, and in this particular novel, the main character is... is, is well, he can get, no other say he's he's an idiot. He really he makes a lot of bad decisions, um, and 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 during the RPG apocalypse. But he's a kind of a lovable idiot. But he's he's someone you root for, in spite of or maybe because he feels like the underdog. Um, and I think at its core, that's the thing that that I still liked. Like the actual RPG mechanics, I've seen them before. Level stats, etc different powers. Uh, the main character does get a couple different powers and that's great. But, um, because he, he has also the respawn ability where he can die and then come back, uh, you know, responding to his home base or the case, he, 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 he can essentially be stupid. He can be, make poor decisions. He can, he can not be the most efficient or amazing OP character. Um, and he can still learn and kind of grow still from, from the, from, from that fact. Um, and I think again, it is the under don't talk where you, even though you see the main character doing maybe less than efficient things or, or making poor choices where you're like, I, I can't believe you did that. Um, you're still like, I still want, <laughs> I want him to win. Um, and so for me, I think that was enough to, to kind of push the story forward where I, I, you have a pink character that's still relatively enjoyable, um, and it has kind of this darker self-deprecating sense of humor, um, that, that I, I could appreciate, um, and going through these adventures, like fighting zombies or different monsters, getting involved in kind of this, um, um, tournament style fighting situation and, 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 and fleshing out like the, the, the game or other characters and still be enjoyable. Um, there were a few like story choices. Like I, I, I know why the author did it. 
but I still disagree on, on a reader level. Like, oh, like that was, that doesn't have like a logical progress. Like one of the big ones for me was the main character hoards his ability points that he could have used to become better at, at fighting or anything else for no good reason in the story. And, and at the end of the story, like, oh, he's using it for this ability to advance it in this direction. But it felt like the main character wouldn't have known that in advance. So there really wasn't a point for him to like hoard those characters, except that the author knew he would need them later for book two or whatever. Um, but besides that, everything else on the, on the game mechanics that is pretty fairly um, well written and connected to the actual story. So good stuff. Um, for me, this could score 7.4 out of 10. Again, loses like a little bit uh, just because of a few issues, but on the whole, just it's entertaining. It's a good read. Um, but again, you, <laughs> you have to be okay with like an idiot main character. Um, there are other reviews that are like, this guy is too dumb to survive or some other reviews, like a title like that. Um, so if you don't like kind of a dumbish main character that you can kind of still enjoy or, or appreciate dark humor, maybe this isn't for you, but for me, it was fine. Uh, so apocalypse here, a dark fantasy game lit adventures of a Dan book series, um, gets a score of 7.4 out of 10. And next up we have Mind Games, a Little Bit of Apocalypse, real RPG book number one with this uh, written by Mark Whipple. It is 323 pages. It is $3.99. It's available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. Eight internet friends have an IRL meeting in a mountain cabin. But instead of the long weekend get-together they planned, they are suddenly caught in the end of the world as they knew it. They just met up for the first time in real life last night, and today's group wake-up call is a strange message floating in the air telling them that something called a system start has just happened. Now, magic works and technology doesn't. Cell phones won't work, cars won't start, and it's 10 miles to the nearest town. Some of them have families to worry about. Some of them don't even believe this is real. And all of them have secrets they have to overcome if they're going to work together and make it back to town alive. On the way, they'll meet other survivors, also confused, scared, and questioning what's happening. 10 miles doesn't seem that far, but by the end of it, they will have faced some of the worst that the system can throw at them. And then, things get really interesting. The small Tennessee town they're trying to reach is isolated, cut off, and surrounded by a new and terrifying world. Outside the town, ordinary creatures are becoming things out of nightmare, and inside the town, legends are coming to life. There we go. That, that's a novel description. It's a little long, and I think it gives away a little bit too much of the story, but still, it is accurate. Um, this is an RPG apocalypse story that does a really good job of hitting all the right notes for this subgenre. And again, if you don't know what RPG apocalypse story is, apocalypse like a zombie apocalypse or a viral apocalypse it just has like this rpg theme where people get system notifications and rpg ish kind of system um and i think this trash that tackles the apocalypse part fairly well um it's not as dark as some other stories um so i might really not not satisfy the people who love grim dark apocalypse stories and well i think it does um, convey uh, an appropriate sense of danger, not because not only because of the monsters that appear in the in the story, but also because of the threat of other people. People are jerks. People are prone to violence. Um, and in in any situation where there's apocalypse, people are, are likely to abuse their powers or use them maliciously or just just kind of give in to the evil that is in them. Um, and I think the story does a good job of hinting at some of those things, but not actually fleshing them out a lot. And maybe that's something the author is, is, is saving for another book. But on the whole, that aspect of it is, is kind of limited to a couple of jerk uh, jerks who were just trying to murder them for being murder hobos. Um, but nothing like too much darker than that. Um, there are also natural conflict points of like limited food systems, uh, no water, no electricity from like the natural city resources, plus all the roaming monsters, of course. Um, so the, that apocalypse is, is done fairly well on the RPG side of things, little RPG side of things. Um, the game mechanics felt really solid. Like there's a lot of notifications. There are familiar systems, levels, XP, stats, classes, etc. Um, there is a unique character class for the main character and some of the other, other characters in his group. But this is, is, is going to be the, the unique one, uh, Mind Mage, or uh, in this case, I think it's called a Mesmerizer character class, which is kind of this psychic um, character class, which fits into the theme of the initial like um, group of people meeting in real life for the first time, um, which I'm not necessarily going to spoil it for you. Um, but it, it's, I was surprised at how 
little that was that mental mage system was used in the first half of the story. It's not really used until like the second half when you get when they get to town, which is not spoiled because it's in the novel description. Um, but once it does, it becomes like a regular feature of like, oh, he's he's using it for good. He's not using it to to corrupt or, or in a pervy way necessarily. Um, but the use of that particular system was very well thought in its consequences and its limitations um, and in its potential applications. Um, and I liked that particular class system as feeling unique and giving this story kind of this this freshness as far as like this mage character class goes. Um, other reviewers have, have noted it felt a little pervy and, and particularly can because of what that initial group is 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 doing as, as content. We're going to a little second. Um the action of the story, good. Lots of good action here. But the thing that I think I enjoyed the most about the story is definitely the character development and the character progression on a social uh, level in the story. The main character, the author actually brings a lot of these characters to life. They're not one dimensional. They all have um, interesting personalities, flawed personalities. So nobody's perfect. Nobody knows everything. And there are internal conflicts within the group, which are, in, in, to me at least, um, healthily discussed and talked out and worked and worked around. So um, I liked that social um, progression and character development in this, in the story. I think that uh, there is a good bit of talking and dialogue that brings these characters and give them, give them each a personality, um, which, which is good for me. Um, I will point out a few things that were bothered by other reviewers. They weren't big deal to me, but I like there are things you should know if you, if you're deciding to read this or not. One, there are unconventional relationships in the story, including um, the striding group uses hypnotism for adult fun among consenting adults. It is there. There is also a dom, um, dom, I forget what the exact word, a dom sub, um, relationship. Um, is it dominant and submissive? I can't remember what the exact terms are. Um, but there is that kind of relationship. Again, it's among consenting adults. Um, there is no sex in the story, no graphic sex. There was some implied sex saying, oh, those two probably hooked up in, you know, before the story occurred or something, or like people going off into together and like, and coming back like, Hmm, you're close and a little ruffled and you got some big smiles in your faces. Uh, and, but nothing graphic beyond, beyond those, um, inferences. Um, there are sex jokes in the story. Uh, it's part of its humor. Um, and they're, and they're inferences that people have been intimate as part of their relationships. Um, and, and if that bothers you, let it know now. Um, th- another review criticism from other reviews are essentially been the locations chosen for this, for the story doesn't feel like it, it is reflective of the people who've actually lived there. Um, I think it's called Pigeon Ford and apparently it's a huge tourist town and that is not really reflected, uh, according to the people who live there, accurate enough, including like the attitude of locals for an apocalypse type situation. I can't comment on that. I don't, it didn't bother me cause I've never lived there. Um, but that always occurs whenever you use a real place in a, in your story. Um, that's why I, I tend to personally just use made up locations where people can't criticize like, Oh, I've lived there and that's not what it's like, you know, one star or two stars, whatever. Um, so it's a thing, but those are probably the, some of the recurring <laughs> things that I've seen people talk about for me. I didn't really care. I, 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 I like interesting situations like that. I like interesting, uh, relation dy- dynamics, it's as fascinating as, as, you know, a good monster fight or something. Uh, for me, it's a really good story. Um, and it only kind of got better as the story unfolded. So for me, it gets a score of 7.7 out of 10. That's mind games, a little bit of apocalypse story, uh, with a score of 7.7 out of 10. Okay, folks, that is it. I'm done with the show. Five nice reviews for you folks this week. Um, thank you very much for listening, for watching. If you want to, uh, follow the podcast. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, our website, just look for the lit RPG podcast and you can, you can find our location. We also have links in the show notes for you. If you want to click on the directly and follow us, uh, anywhere to get the latest little bit of reviews every week, get a whole list of, of, of the latest releases on audiobooks or little bit titles or eBooks. Um, we try, I try to put together <laughs> those lists for you because I know how hard it is to find them in one place. If you're, if you're a voracious reader or audiobook listener, like I am, uh, we also have links for some fun, Facebook groups um, that do literary stuff and talk to readers and authors um, really 
really good groups there. If you want to support the podcast this week, remember you can um, buy the pre-order for the Mechanical Crafter book number two. Um, it's up now. That'll be available for you to, to use in Kindle Unlimited or to purchase on actually July the 24th. That's when it actually comes out. Um, if you like book number one, please go get book number two. Or if you want to listen to the audiobook, it's out now for book number one. And hopefully in a month or two, uh, the audiobook for book two will be out. So thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching, folks. Um, until we can hang it again, remember to go read some little RPG.